Welcome to your level six region study guide. This is gonna be short and sweet. I'm just gonna review the properties and the formulas that you need to know. Well, the first part of this is being able to find the sum of the interior angles, one interior angle, and the exterior angle of a polygon. These are the formulas you will need to know. To find the sum, okay, you need to know this formula. It's just n minus two times 180. That is how you find the sum of the interior angles. All right, and that just means if I added up all of these angles in a polygon, what would they add up to? The second one is each interior angle. And the way to do that is you just find the sum. So you use the same formula. And you divide that by how many angles there are. So for example, if I knew the sum of this to find each or just one interior angle, I would just divide it by how many angles there are. And that would tell me one. That's each one. All right. So in this case, I would divide by one, two, three, four, five, six. And to find the exterior angle, which would be this, that is the exterior angle, the angle on the outside, all I'd have to do is know the interior angle, what one interior angle was, and since this is a straight line, I would just subtract 180. So it's just 180 minus one interior angle. So if they said, what's the exterior angle of a hexagon? All you'd have to do is find each interior angle first and then do 180 minus that. All right, hopefully that gets us on the right track. Now, properties. You should check your notes to find these, but because I like you, I'm going to tell you all the properties. The parallelogram properties, let's just go through them. The opposite sides, sides are parallel. Opposite sides, oh, sorry. Opposite sides are congruent, are congruent, opposite Angles are congruent. All right, so the first three are pretty easy. Opposite sides, opposite sides, opposite angles. All right. The adjacent angles are supplementary. Those are the angles that are next to each other. So if I had a parallelogram, the adjacent ones would be the ones next to each other, and the opposite angles would be across. And then finally, diagonals bisect each other, or they cut each other bisect each other. So they cut each other in half. So now a rhombus, a rectangular square, these are all parallelograms. So they have all of these properties still. So each one of these shares all of these properties and then they have special ones. The special rhombus properties are all sides are congruent. All sides are congruent. The diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect the angles. The rectangle properties, the special ones for a rectangle, are just all angles are 90, are 90 degrees. So in a rectangle, if you can visualize that, Remember, all the angles are 90. And it's always good to draw a picture if you don't know what I'm talking about. And the diagonals are congruent. The special square properties, well, what makes a square a square? It actually is just a combination of the parallelogram properties. It's a par you know what, I'm sorry. Call me a stick there, but I wanna do this in blue because it's blue. It's a parallelogram, so it has all of those properties. It has all the properties of a rhombus, so all the sides are congruent, the diagonals are perpendicular, the diagonals bisected. And it also has all the properties of, of, of a rectangle. So it's a rectangle. So a square is a parallelogram, it's also a rhombus, and it's also a rectangle. So all squares are rectangles, all squares are rhombuses, and all squares are parallelograms. Don't forget that. It shares all of those properties. If you remember, there will be a problem on the regions that says, 
which one of these has this property? If you know all the properties, you can answer it. An isosceles trapezoid, look in your notes. That's less than 6.5. I'll let you do that on your own. The trapezoid mid-segment theorem, you might remember this, but to solve that, all you have to do is plug into this formula. The median is equal to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. That's it. All you have to do is plug in the median and plug into this formula. Base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. Plug it in, you're good to go. Improving parallel grounds on the coordinate plane. This is usually like one of those six-point questions. You'll need to prove a parallelogram is a parallelogram using the coordinates. You could do it in one of three ways. If you need to prove that the opposite sides are parallel, just prove that they have the same slope. Prove that opposite sides have the same slope. If you want to prove the opposite sides are congruent, you're going to need the distance formula, right? Because the distance shows that the length is the same. All right, that gives us length, and this gives us slope. And if we want to show the diagonals bisect each other, right? So this is my parallelogram. I want to show they bisect each other. I need the midpoint formula. And why do I need the midpoint formula? Because the midpoint will be the same for both of these. So I take both diagonals, the diagonal one midpoint, one should be equal to the midpoint of the diagonal 2. So remember, if you want to show opposite sides are parallel, use the slope. If you want to show that they're the same size, use the distance. And if you want to show that the, the diagonals bisect each other, just use the midpoint formula. All right, that's it for this one. Bada